Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we have the latest on what is going on up in the stratosphere but concentrating today more on the effects that we could see down in the troposphere i.e. actually affecting us on the ground. Now of course we've seen the sun transfer warming now occur, it's occurred in the last sort of 24 or 48 hours and we have seen a reversal of the zonal mean winds high up in the atmosphere but what everyone will be asking is, it doesn't matter what happens up there, what happens down at the surface? Will we see warm conditions? Will we see cold conditions? Will it rain loads? Or could we even see some late season snow? Is that a possibility? Now in this video, of course, we can't have all the answers, but I'll try and show you what some of the longer range charts, the ECMWF mean anomalies are showing. These are some of the charts that we use quite a lot for our winter look aheads. And I have found that they are generally pretty accurate they normally do get the right idea sometimes not the detail but that of course um, is unlikely with models when they're looking four five six weeks ahead but it normally does get a good idea of what is occurring and you know, interestingly already we could be seeing some impacts of the sudden stratospheric warming at the surface so do remember if you enjoy my videos which you like and subscribe our rooms for me on twitter as well the links in description now firstly we're just starting over on the weather is cool.com and just looking um at the polar vortex status you can see here just on the left of the screen that officially the zonal wing winds are in a reversal and they're at 19.2 meters per second in an easterly direction which is pretty ridiculous now the strongest um or weakest zonal wing winds the strongest reversal we've ever seen is back in 2016 on this date of 28.7 meters per second negative there and the strongest we've ever seen is here 52.6 meters per second in 2019 so you can see we can get a whole array of strength uh, above uh, in the stratosphere this time of year but you can see we are very close to some of the weakest winds we've ever had on this date now this is a chart of course we focus on a lot on monday and of course the forecast has been pretty much 100 percent correct and you can see here about a day or two ago we finally crossed that threshold and we are down close to minus 20 meters per second and we do look like we're going to remain in that negative territory for the foreseeable future you can also see these other charts of course we have looked in these on monday's video so do check that out but again you can see the light uh, the really bright colors on the left picture that is the insanely negative winds and the anomaly charts on the right just showing you that we are 30 40 50 meters per second slower than average depending on the height in the atmosphere uh, but what we want to see is how will this big big weakening of the zonal mean winds high up in the atmosphere many kilometers up actually impact the troposphere now the first thing we need to have a look at is the longevity how long are those zonal mean winds going to be negative because sometimes it, it can only be negative for a day or two and that's not going to have too much of a propagating impact it's not only the severity of the warming but it's the longevity now you can see here from the ecmwf um zonal mean winds for the next few weeks all the way out to the end of march this is a long event now it's aided by the fact that it is right toward the end of the polar vortex season which um which is when the polar vortex inevitably decreases but it does it on a very slow trend you see the red line here going from around 20 meters per second at the start of march and you see as we head into april we get down towards zero in and around the, the sort of the second or third week of the month so this sudden stratospheric warming is basically obliterating the polar vortex about five six weeks earlier than it normally would do and sometimes we do see a recovery but we're not seeing a recovery here it's staying in negative territory all the way for the rest of the spring and of course the polar vortex won't reform until late august september time so yet yeah, we are seeing pretty unprecedented sort of uh, pattern here not in terms of having a sun stress for it warming this time of year but just the fact that it's so long lasting these negative zone we went so we're not seeing a bounce we've seen this before but as I stated in Monday's video, I've never personally seen this when looking at the chart. So honestly, it's very difficult to actually tell what is going to occur. But you can see here, very strong negative anomaly for the next few weeks. So there is a high chance, in my opinion at least, that we will see large propagating impacts. But what will those impacts be? 
Now, if you go over to the 500 HBA weekly mean anomaly charts, this is looking at um, high pressure, low pressure at 500 HPA. So not 10 HPA, which is high up in the atmosphere, 500 HPA, which is getting down to the troposphere, generally where our low pressure, high pressure takes place. So this is looking at areas of lower pressure, areas of high pressure, high pressure in orange, low pressure in, uh, in blue here. You know, maybe looking at this and being like, where's the high pressure that's producing our northeasterly winds at the moment? Now, this is because the valid time here is next Monday until the following Monday, so from the 17th to the 24th. So this is very much a longer range, medium to longer range chance, not looking at the immediate impacts. So you can see next Monday, you can see that eventually the high pressure sips to our east and we are likely to see some sort of Atlantic influence re-emerging. But into the following week, Look at this. There's a lot of orange to our north. I'll probably actually keep this on the uh, North Pole chart, actually. Um, as that should give us a better indication of the blocking patterns. But look at this. Quite a lot of orange. Lots of blue next week. But look at the orange penetrating into the Arctic. Lots of lobes getting pushed away. And that could be the tropospheric polar vortex getting split apart. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean... We're going to go very cold. We are getting into the last week of March here. But what it could mean is very amplified jet stream and very, very variable conditions. Into the following week, still a massive blocking signal up towards Greenland, potentially signalling easterly winds, or perhaps something that we would not want to see, which is potentially a cut-off low. This sort of pattern could produce something very cold in winter time. But now we're getting to early April, it'd probably be cool, but I think the biggest impacts would be the low pressure to our south, potentially drawing up some more moisture from the south, and this could be quite a big rain event. So a sun transfer at warming this time of year doesn't necessarily mean cold conditions. It could also cause warm conditions if a big European high Scandinavian extension built in drag up the air from the Azores, but it could also mean trapped lows and if trapped lows get involved these cut off lows then we could go very rainy and that could be what we're seeing here following week still huge blocking pattern low pressure well to our south so again potentially a southerly tracking jet stream could be a relatively cold pattern and finally into the following week still a strong blocking signal so you can see here it's difficult to say exactly what we'll see at the surface we're kind of trying to read between the lines here but generally speaking, a very strong blocking signal here today from the weekly mean anomalies from the ECMWF, which just gives pretty high confidence that we are going to see some pretty abnormal conditions as we do head into the second half of the month into early April. Again, what those conditions will be will be all dependent on the exact orientation of high pressure, low pressure. Because as I said, northeasterly wind can be very cold. A southeasterly wind can be very warm. So slight tilts in the high pressure positioning could make all the difference um so yeah we'll have to wait and see but the one resounding impact from the looks of these charts major northern blocking or at least northern hemisphere blocking looks pretty likely and another way to view this is have a look at the weather regimes using the same data it is puts uh, each ensemble member into a regime chart so the last chart um had it all averaged out showing roughly where high pressure, low pressure is setting up. This is showing the scenario in each ensemble member and giving a probability on based on how many per day are in those uh, in those different bands. So we've got the positive NAO, that's typically stormy, unsettled, westerly. Block, this is a Scandinavian block. That would be potentially easterly winds. And generally, we are looking um, at potentially a colder pattern. Negative NAO, that's normally sort of a Greenland high or at least Atlantic amplification, normally associated with a northerly wind. Purple, Atlantic ridge, so high pressure up towards Iceland potentially coming in out of the North Atlantic. That's what we're seeing at the moment with our northeasterly winds kind of ridging over us. And then grey is kind of all mixed in between, no major regime. So you see, not every single scenario fits into those main four categories. And that's why we have the no regime. But roughly speaking, most overall synoptic patterns do fit into these four. The, th the, the latter three all have colder potential. Negative NAO, not always cold. Atlantic ridging, not always cold. Scandinavian block, normally is cold though. So interestingly, 
Atlantic regime now. And look at the longer term. Look at the reds. Very strong signal. So of Scandinavian, potentially Svalbard, that sort of area seeing big high pressure. Very interesting, that indeed. And the big thing that stands out to me here is the very little number of some members that are showing blues, which is positive NAO. That's a strong tropospheric polar vortex. So it looks like a high probability that we're going to see some, of the, some sort of blocking, some sort of high pressure ridging, whether it's a Scandinavian block, Greenland high with a negative NAO, or just generally Atlantic ridging, amplified jet stream, or even subtly tracking jet stream. So again, another chart here that shows you we are not going to be seeing stormy Atlantic conditions from the looks of these latest runs. It looks pretty blocked and pretty abnormal as we do head into the end of March and early April. Because remember, this isn't just one week. This is early to mid-March all the way to late April. So this is three, four, five weeks, not just one week of blocking, which is not too abnormal, but many, many weeks could be pretty abnormal indeed. So we'll have to wait and see. So that's pretty much all the charts I wanted to show you today, because of course we've not got too much data looking too far ahead. But in the next sort of week or two, I'm expecting a lot more to crop up in the daily videos um, of some pretty interesting charts in the longer range. I suspect we'll see some hot charts, some cold charts, unsettled charts. We'll see a bit of everything, I suspect. And yeah, just already setting up that I'm expecting potentially to see some quite big blocking appearing. But yeah, very interesting. And of course, it's going to be a very interesting watch over the next few weeks to see how this starts to develop. So do make sure you do stay tuned. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.